I wanted to like robot lawn mowers, thinking they'd be like the hoovers that have plagued everybody's homes. That I'd be able to simply buy one, set it down and have a cut lawn without getting my hands dirty. After using a more premium unit from this company called Ambrosio in my back garden for the last half a year, it's now time to sort the front out. So like anybody else, I went onto Amazon and I was about to pull the trigger on one of these, but I got extremely confused with the different types of mapping technology from each unit. And I ended up going to Lidl to buy this, the Parkside Primer 20 Li for literally 200 pounds. And I can't believe how well this thing works. But before we talk about that bargain, a little about robot mapping tech, because this is where it gets confusing. So there's four main sets of tech that mowers generally use. The first, GPS or real-time kinematic. This is basically GPS like you'd find in your car and in your phone, but in a robot lawnmower as well. A base station that you have to put in your yard. This is the RTK portion of it. Now GPS can be fairly accurate on its own, but not really for a robot lawnmower that needs to know exactly where it is down to a square meter. The RTK base stations that you see with a lot of these robot mowers are basically like a backup GPS. So the robot mower can, for example, look at its own GPS data versus the data from the RTK base station, do some simple math, and with the speed of light, figure out any sort of offset within down to one or two centimeters, which is really quite accurate. This is, on the surface, a really good idea because with the robot's actual position, you could, for example, have straight lines mowed into your lawn. But you need good GPS coverage. If you have any shaded areas or areas with weak GPS signal, the robot mower will struggle. This also limits where you can place the actual charging dock itself and the RTK base station to go with it. The vision-based systems are fairly simple. A camera and an algorithm to tell it what it's looking at. These work well around buildings or under tree coverage that have a weak GPS signal. And you also don't need a faffy RTK antenna to complete this installation. Visual robots tend to be a little bit slower though due to the time taking to navigate. And obviously these things can't work at night. This is the same as the camera-based system, but adds LiDAR into the mix for some added stability and the ability to cut at night. Mowers that incorporate all these different bits of tech in one single mower are new to the market and therefore do come with an inflated price tag to match. So yes, none of this seems easy and it's expensive. Alex, I just want a robot to cut my lawn. This is the cheapest unit from Lidl and it cost 200 pounds. And it uses a perimeter wire, which yes, is the oldest trick in the book. But in my opinion, it's one of the best. In a nutshell, you run this wire around the edge of your garden. The robot can detect it as an edge and then simply stay inside. With this, nothing can really go wrong. No weak GPS, no uncut grass, the thing just cuts. So when I bought this home from Lidl, I was super interested to see if it would actually work. And it's genuinely really good. In the box, obviously you get the robot mower itself, you get the charging base, you get 500 meters of the perimeter delimiter, which is what they call the exterior wire, which defines the border for the robot. Can you see there's kind of like a little line down here? The difference is actually crazy. So this here is the perimeter wire for the little robot. Now, robots that use a perimeter wire, they all use it fairly differently. Some will go up to the perimeter wire and then completely turn around, whereas this little mower wants to go over the perimeter wire and then turn around. So you can see here that I've set it in about 30 centimeters and it's left the edge uncut, which is great because it's a good demo to see how well this cheap little 200 pound robot has cut the lawn. And I have to say, I am thoroughly impressed. And it's really hard to capture this on video, but right here where I'm stood is the perimeter wire. So what's in front of me has been cut and what's behind me is left to be cut. Let's see if this robot's up to the task. <laughs> So 
guys, it's been a few days. We've had a sudden change of weather in the UK. That's all to be expected. However, one thing I didn't expect was this 200 pound mower to do such a good job of my front lawn. I have to say I am thoroughly impressed. Now I had to alter the charging base layout with this setup a little bit because it had to be on one of the straight lines, one of the sides of the garden, as to which it's now on and this thing can, when it finishes its mow, return to home and charge itself by itself all automatically without me having to do anything. Now the unit has numerous modes. You have spot mode and schedule. Spot mode, you basically go and place this robot physically in a spot in your garden, put it in spot mode and it will just simply do circles until your lawn is cut. You can do schedules per day. So I have this robot to come on every single day four separate times throughout the night. It sort of goes, finds the border, turns in a different direction and then mows in a straight line again. Now, what are the downsides of that perimeter wire? Well, the downsides are without precise mapping, you can't get straight lines in your lawn. And over the years of using these robot mowers, I thought I was gonna hate the fact that I didn't have lines in my lawn, but I'm starting to love the fact that with a robot mower, you can have your lawn looking like an actual carpet. Now let's address these crazy prices. It's insane going onto Amazon and seeing the plethora of robot mowers on there with obscene prices. They generally seem to start from around 400 pounds, which is double what this little mower cost me. So is the robot mower industry a little bit of a scam at the moment? At the end of the day, these things really aren't that technologically advanced unless you get the ones with GPS and RTK or a camera and LiDAR based navigation system. And to have accurate results with one of these mowers, you have to get the ones with the camera and the LiDAR it's expensive. Now with these perimeter wire ones, there isn't really much setup to do other than defining your perimeter with the wire. So there's work involved with both ways you go. A perimeter wire, you lay the wire. The other robots need to be told. So the be all and end all of this is, if you just want your lawn cut, get a robot mower with a perimeter wire because they're the most reliable. But also don't spend loads of money on a perimeter wire robot. Even the cheaper models like this one here from Lidl seem to get the job done absolutely fine. I thought I was gonna return this thing and it's definitely staying. They do give you some spare razor blades in the box and the good thing is the razor blades are fairly inexpensive. But we are gonna see if we can mod this robot mower and put something a little bit more beefy on the bottom of it. So if you wanna see more on that, make sure you are subscribed. Anyway guys, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and we need to thank today's video sponsor. Squarespace. Shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace, the company that made making my website, mmwifi.io, an absolute breeze. Whether you're an expert or just starting out, Squarespace has got all the tools to make building your vision a reality. The new AI powered tools are a game changer. From generating tailored templates to helping you refine your design, Squarespace makes it easy to bring your vision to life with just a few clicks. Plus, with their built-in SEO tools, your website will be optimized to reach the audience that you want it to reach, using search engines like Google, for example. It's the perfect way to grow your brand or business under the one unique platform. So if you're after getting started, you guys can save 10% on your first Squarespace purchase or domain by simply using code TECHFLOW or go to squarespace.com forward slash TECHFLOW and we'll have that below the fold. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video.